hormones affect every system in the human body, so when they are well balanced, we function at a vibrant, high energy level, we sleep well, and our skin glows, apparently. Lorna Vanderhaeg is a nutritional medicine expert and medical researcher. Her new book is called A Smart Woman's Guide to Hormones. It is my pleasure to welcome Lorna Vanderhaeg back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Well, always my pleasure to be here. Well, nice to see you again. Yes. About once a month we yeah. do this dance. Mm -hmm. Congrats try. on yet another. Yes, this is book number 11. And, uh, you know, when we look at the fact that next year, 50% of the adult women in Canada will be in menopause or postmenopause. 50% of women. It's huge. Really? So Those huge. boomers, <laughs> what are they thinking? Yeah. What were they? It will be the boomers, I our, guess. Our poor doctors, you know, they're going to be overwhelmed by these hot, mm. flashing, fanning, you know, osteoporotic oh ridden women. Exactly. Hot flashes and, and belly fat. My yeah. golly. Okay, so how to stop hot flashes. Um, what do you do? Well, first we have to understand that all of the symptoms of menopause may have nothing to do with menopause and a lot to do with low thyroid, exhausted adrenals, mm. uh, too much stress. And, you know, there are some women who their periods stop and they feel great. They have no symptoms whatsoever. We only hear about the ones who are having mm -hmm. 50 hot flashes a day and tend to have mood problems right. and bone and joint problems and a whole host of other symptoms. Sure. The fastest way to control hot flashes and night sweats is to de-stress your life. It truly is, you know, uh, reduce stress because we know women who are under lots of stress actually have more hot flashes and night sweats than women who are not under a lot of stress. Right. And that means supporting and loving your adrenal glands. And we have nutrients for that, lots of sleep. And unfortunately, uh, the issue with sleep at menopause is probably the worst. Most women have a hard time getting, you know, a full night's sleep. Many of them wake up in the middle of the mm -hmm. night. And as you know so well, it's not the stress that kills you. It's how you handle the stress that kills you. Well, that's true. It is true. And at menopause, this is a time when women should really say it's all about me. And mm. if you do actually say that, it may sound that you know you're you're focusing on yourself if you actually did that your symptoms of menopause would be reduced and you'd go through menopause a lot quicker the most women should be about 18 months where they see symptoms and then it's gone and you move on into the next phase of your life and many women actually have a much harder time in perimenopause which is the 10 to 15 years before uh, menopause hits. right and I know you wrote a book once about that menopause treat the cause right uh, you say, and I know you're right, that hormones affect every system in our body. That means digestive system, immune system, what? Everything. I mean, your skin, your hair, how your brain works. I mean, we know that, and remember, we have lots of different hormones. Your Insulin's sex life. Hormone. Your sex life, absolutely. And we're seeing no libido in 20-year-olds today. So Why? this book... Um, I think it's stress. I think the birth control pill in the book, uh, Dr. Petal and I, who's a gynecologist and a mm -hmm. world-renowned bioidentical hormone expert, he and I co-authored this book. Uh, when we were writing the book, we uh, published research about the birth control pill literally killing women's sex drive. And when they come off it, it doesn't always come back. So that's an important factor. And the researchers who did this work actually believe that women should be warned of this when they go on the birth control pill. So what is it shutting down? It disrupts pill? testosterone. The cell that makes testosterone in some women when they take the pill, uh, they no longer make testosterone properly and testosterone is a hormone of desire. So mm. if you're not making any testosterone, there's no va va voom going on. Okay, so low desire no matter uh, what age, how do right. you jump start it if uh, you have it? Well, you know, this or is don't where have it. <laughs> this is where, you know, we we put a whole chapter in the book on symptoms of different hormones, mm -hmm. whether or not this, that you were low in testosterone or high or low in estrogen or high. And we did these symptom questionnaires because a lot of people can't afford to have saliva hormone testing, which is the most accurate way to look at hormones or urine testing, which we can send to the US. Uh, most uh, Canadian doctors only do blood testing, which tells us very little nothing about estrogen and very little about some of our other hormones. Okay. So understanding that first, you could use bioidentical testosterone if you've got no libido. And we have lots of libido herbs in the health food store that mm. work very well for jump-starting libido again. And bioidentical means? 
bioidentical means hormones that are structured exactly like the hormones made by your body. In Canada, they're prescription drugs. In the U.S., they're not. You can buy them over the counter in many health food stores, which I don't think is a good thing. Mm. Here, they're prescription drugs. So you go to your doctor, you get a prescription for bioidentical hormones. They're made up in a compounding pharmacy just for you. So you may need a little bit of testosterone. You may need a little bit of progesterone. You may need no estrogen. And uh, in the book, we actually put the prescriptions for bioidentical hormones in the book in case your doctor doesn't know how to write a prescription right. for Right, and it's specific to the individual, which is so important. It is. You know, the one-size-fits-all uh, Premarin and Provera does not mm -hmm. work for women. And we know that from the big clinical trials that were done where they found increased risk of breast cancer, heart attack, and stroke in women who took synthetic hormones. I still believe even with bioidentical hormones, you should do them low-dose, short-term, and under the guidance of a healthcare okay. practitioner. And why do so many women have low thyroid? Oh goodness, uh, low thyroid in Canada is caused for several reasons. One, not enough vitamin D, and that should be improving because people are adding mm -hmm. vitamin D to their uh, diet and their supplement regime. Uh, not enough minerals. You know, the reason why they added potassium iodide, which is a mineral, to our table salt was to treat low thyroid and enlarged thyroid in women and men. Of course, people aren't eating salt anymore, so we're actually seeing a, a big resurgence in goiters, which is a big fat and large thyroid. And, uh, you know, right. I mean, yeah, you solve one mm. problem, high blood pressure, and you <laughs> create another one. Mm. So, you know, eating too much soy foods, which completely disrupts hormones, uh, you know, creates infertility. It also causes low thyroid. So I'm not a fan of uh, soy uh, foods at all. You mean an edamame bean, pure soy, or something else? Uh, edamame, uh, soy milk, soy flowers, uh, those I don't recommend, especially if you're a young woman trying to get pregnant. We do talk about fertility in the book. Because the book is really about from birth till death in mm -hmm. regards to hormones. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we talk about soy, and I think you and I have chatted about this before, sure. we really, uh, you know, we should not be eating soy foods unless it's soy sauce and miso, which is fermented. Okay, good to know. Uh, Non-hormone tests that can save your life. Yes. I like that part of the book. Uh, there are two, you say. There's uh, the ovarian test. Yes. Um, there's a, a test for ovarian cancer, and this particular test called the CA125, a lot of doctors don't like to do it because if you have endometriosis, it can give kind of strange results. But I still think it's a test worth having, especially as a baseline, and maybe have it every five years. And that would be important because ovarian cancer is a silent killer. You know, mm. you don't really know you've got it until it's quite advanced. At a certain age, you should get tested or early, young? I think we should get tested young. Old. Like, let's get tested at 20 and then at 30 and then at 35 and 40 and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, pap smear is another one that is the most important test. And it's shocking to find out that 30% of women have not had a pap test in the last three years. So that's a big chunk of women. Exactly. Once a year? I think it should be once a year. A lot of the provinces in Canada now are trying to spread it out so they only pay for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, once every two years. I don't think that's good enough. I get a letter from my doctor yeah. every year. That's great. You remember, great and you're going, darn. Yeah. Is it that time again? It's important. It mm. saves lives because we know when the um, test is turning into abnormal cells, we can actually reverse those cells using nutrients. Simple nutrients will actually reverse abnormal pap smears. Simple nutrients. Good clinical research showing that you know nutrients like indole 3 carbonyl can actually reverse abnormal pap smears and HPV. Really? Yeah. Where does food fit into all of this? What we eat? Well, food is the foundation. It's the th the least sexy thing about about hormones, and people hate to talk about diet. Mm -hmm. You know, they generally only change their diet when they get cancer or heart disease. But food is the foundation. And interestingly enough, cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, and kale, they actually are your hormone balancing vegetables. They can keep your estrogen and progesterone balanced quite nicely. And then there's this big myth that if you eat too many of them, you'll get low thyroid. It's absolutely not true. You'd have so, to eat 10 cups of them raw a day. So the dark green veg. You want dark green vegetables. You want good, clean sources of protein. You want healthy fats. Sugar completely disrupts your hormones. Coffee does, alcohol does, all those things that we do that we yeah, shouldn't do. I don't put sugar in my coffee, but it does it without sugar? Well, you know, if you drink too much coffee, one or two cups a day is fine, mm. but if you're in the five cup a day range, then you've really got 
issues because we see estradiol levels go up. Right. Well, too bad about that alcohol thing because it's fun. Well, well, well if you one, don't abuse one it, one glass it's of fun. red wine a day isn't going to hurt you. No, that's if, okay. If it's five martinis, that's another problem. Five martinis is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one martini on Friday. How yes, about that? That's good. Okay.